Compounds contain two or more different types of atoms. Compounds typically have properties that differ from those of their constituent elements, which means that we can't always predict the properties of a compound just because we know the properties of the elements individually that are in the compound. The compound typically behaves very differently from how the constituent elements behave. For example, sodium, which is a very soft metal, if we put some in water, it will produce hydrogen gas and then typically in the presence of oxygen that hydrogen gas will ignite and we can often get some spectacular explosions with this. Kind of nasty stuff. Chlorine, in its elemental form, is a poisonous gas. It was used as a chemical weapon during the First World War. However, a very common substance, table salt, contains only these two elements. And table salt, as you know, is great for putting on steak, green beans, and so forth. Table salt has properties very different from the properties of the elements. All samples of a given compound have the same composition by mass. In other words, if I have a very, very tiny sample of sodium chloride, which is what we have on the left, and I have a larger sample of sodium chloride here on the right, they have the same composition. As it says in the lower left here, every sample of NaCl tastes the same, melts at the same temperature, and is 39.3 percent sodium and 60.7 percent chlorine by mass. Let's try a problem. A 550 gram sample of chromium 3 oxide, which has this formula, Cr2O3, has 376 grams of chromium. How many grams of chromium and oxygen are in a 212 gram sample of chromium 3 oxide? We can find the percent chromium in the first sample, 376 divided by 550, which is about 68.4 percent chromium. Now, this second sample, the 212 gram sample, has that same percentage of chromium and that same percentage of oxygen. Each sample of a given compound has a certain percentage of the various elements that are in it. Now we simply need to find 68.4 percent of 212 and 31.6 percent of 212 and that will tell us how many grams of chromium and oxygen respectively are in this new sample. The term composition refers to what the matter is made of. Little girls, for example, are made of three things. Sugar, spice, everything nice. That's what little girls are made of. What are little boys made of? Snips, snails, and puppy dog tails. Those rhymes refer to the composition of little girls and little boys. In chemistry, we're worried about the composition of samples of matter. Copper, for example, is a bunch of copper atoms. It is composed of copper atoms and that's it. Water has a composition of hydrogen and oxygen. Many threesomes of two hydrogens and one oxygen, little Mickey Mouse heads where the face represents an oxygen atom and the ears represent two hydrogen atoms. So when we talk about composition, we're talking about what the matter is made of. The term properties refers to how something behaves, what it looks like, what it smells like. And in chemistry, what we are trying to do, one goal of my class and all chemistry classes, I would conjecture, is that we try to relate what happens at the tiniest level, the microscopic level, the atomic level, to what we observe from our macroscopic perspective. For example, this compound right here, this is called phosgene, and there is its chemical structure. It consists of two chlorine atoms for every one carbon atom for every one oxygen atom with a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. And on the macroscopic level, that was another chemical agent used during the First World War. So in chemistry, we try to relate the microscopic and macroscopic worlds. Final thoughts on compounds. One, 
Compounds have two or more types of atoms strongly bonded together in an unvarying ratio. It is for this reason that all samples of a given compound have the same composition and intensive properties. We'll talk about the term intensive in another lesson. 2. The properties of compounds can't necessarily be predicted based on the properties of their constituent elements. 3. Chemistry connects the macroscopic world of empirical observation with the microscopic or molecular or atomic or subatomic world. This is done by the creation, analysis, and use of models.